Hi, I'm here with Jesse Andrews, the Hello. author of these beautiful books, or this it's beautiful book. book. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions. So, what inspired me? Well, I wanted to write a book about teenagers um, that was funny, but also about something difficult and sad. And um, I just knew, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of books about teenagers with cancer. Um, this was back in 2010 when I was writing it. Um, that, you know, it's, it's a terribly sad thing, but also, uh, you know, this, People learn lessons, and it's, it's kind of glamorized or aestheticized in this way. And um, you know, I just wanted to write a book in which it's like a hard, sad thing. My grandfather uh, was terminally ill when I was writing it, and so I was thinking a lot about that difficulty, the, you know, those moments you have with someone who might not be around that much longer. You know, that you, you just never say the thing you wish you had said to them. You never do the thing you wish you had done. Uh, so obviously, that was a good subject for a hilarious book. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of an idiot. Sort of what cover of Mineral is your favorite? The original, this one, the movie? It's hard to. I have some, a sentimental attachment to the original just because, like, that's the first book yeah. I ever had. You know, the first, like, box in the mail that came with, like, here's your book with your name on it. Um, that's the, 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 that moment is, is so. You just never have feel anything like it again, you know. And so, and so then these show up, and it's like, okay, this is great too. But it's the way that you always love your first kid more than the other kids. <laughs> but they. Who's your Who's your favorite character to write? Um. I don't really have a favorite one. I mean, it would be tied between Greg and Roll. Greg, there's also some pain in writing him because he like is so uncomfortable with himself too, and to slip into that state of self discomfort is not super pleasant. So, I mean, writing Roll is a lot of fun just because he really is himself. You know, and he's, he's a very, very funny character, but he's also like he's so you know. He knows a lot of stuff, he's seen a lot of stuff. And Greg also doesn't have a great handle on how who he actually is. You know, Greg describes him as this like super angry dude. And then when you meet him, I think, and you see him, he's usually like pretty chill. You know? Um and just saying reasonable stuff and being nice and like doing cool stuff. Like, so there that 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 lens too makes it uh, more complicated to write about. Yeah. Um, how did you decide to put movies into like, do, do you love movies? Or you yeah, yeah, I do. Um, but it also seemed like the right uh, art form to inflict on Greg because it's so collaborative. It forces him to collaborate with people. If he loves movies, then he can't just do them alone. He has to like at least have one other person who turns out to be girl. Um, and so that was the right thing to like bring as much conflict as possible in his life. You know, if he was a poet, then he gets to just do that in an attic alone, you know, and have tuberculosis and like just be, you know, dead. Why did that go there? It's like the middle of the afternoon. It's a of a little, sorry. What was your favorite scene to write? Uh, in, in the book, um, I mean, you know, the very last scene, the last scene between Greg and Earl, um, when they're in the Vietnamese restaurant together, um, was a lot of fun to write because something big has changed and we're never going to really see it, you know, um, but... They, get, they talk to each other, they see each other differently than they did before, and it's not like it's all right all of a sudden. It's not like everything's forgiven and reconciled. It's just like now we're older, and now we have more baggage, and we have to find a way to move on. And it's still funny, but there's also, it, it feels true to, to the process of growing up. How was writing the script to the movie as opposed to writing the book? Um, I mean, you know, long process uh, and, and it, uh, you know, writing a script is, has its own conventions, it's, it's shorter, it's a lot shorter, 100 pages, uh, the font's smaller, if like you look at the, like this is like the book size font, and then <laughs> this is 
the you see like this font is bigger. It's just fewer words a page. So you really don't have a lot of real estate and you can you gotta just get to the point, which doesn't always happen in this book. Even though it's super short, it still sometimes is like not making a point like a page or two. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I learned a lot. I, I, I learned from my great uh, teacher, Dan Fogelman. Um, so, yeah, I submitted a script to him. It was god awful. And he was like, Jesse, like, great job. Like, you did an amazing job with the script. I have a few notes. And then, like, four and a half hours later, we had just taken apart every page of this script because none of it was actually good. All of it was bad, and we had to start over, basically. We didn't have to start over, like, outline-wise. It was just, like, I'd, like, see what you did. You know, here, like, this, I know what you're trying to do, and it's, like, it's so good, dude, but, like, it can't work in this world. And actually, what he was saying was, like, and it's not good. And you should change it, definitely, every, in every possible conceivable way. Um, <laughs> but then, like, the second, you know, in, in ways that I could really learn from, too. This is making him sound kind of cruel. No, he wasn't. He was so, like, giving and, like, with the de taking part of your page, like, you, there was so much to learn from that. So much of, like, oh, this is what a film needs, you know? It, it needs every sentence to do work in, like, three different ways, you know? Every sentence is load-bearing in terms of, like, character and plot and, you know, just momentum, pace, in, in ways that, like, sentences in books get to be a little lazier because there's so many more of them. Um, from writing the script to the movie being released, what was your, what was the most exciting part? I mean, some of those actors are pretty cool <laughs> to me. You know, like just like hanging out with like Connie Britton, you know, Nick Offerman, Molly Shannon. Um, I mean, not to mention the leads. Like, I it wasn't as familiar with their work, but you know, Thomas, Olivia, RJ. We did just spent a lot of time. You said most exciting, and this is a little more like we actually just spent all about to be good, good friends. I mean, the most exciting thing was the first time I saw it in a movie theater. You know, and like. You see, like, the, like the, the card for the production company, Indian Paintbrush, and then the card for the distributor, Fox Searchlight, and then you see this thing that you <laughs> made with, like, strangers. They're in the room, they're eating popcorn, you can hear it, and you can smell it, you know? And, like, it's this thing that like so much work went into and yet here it is happening it wasn't like impossible it wasn't a dream it's like that's a real goddamn thing it's like uh it's impossible to articulate which is why i sound like a moron right now. but it's mind-blowing it's just it's just inconceivable even as it's happening yeah cool yeah. so rumor has it you have an next or another book out in april oh yeah cool. yeah any info on that all the rumors no, it's uh, yeah, it's official. It's official. Um, what do you ask about? I would give a little. What is it about? It's uh, that book is um, it's three teenagers again, uh, two guys and a girl again, but no one dies this time, and instead uh, they're yes. Uh, spoiler alert! Yes. Not that it doesn't. We're never too worried that they're gonna die. Um, they're uh, musicians, uh, they play, they meet at jazz camp. The two guys are already best friends, they're 17, and the girl is a little older, she's 17. Um, and they all hate jazz camp, they're the worst ones there. Uh, cause, and they're good, but it's a prestigious camp, so it's like this, you know, and just, just it's like some guys are talking in jazz voice, you know, like just sort of dudes with like fedoras, with like eagle feathers, you know, 16 year old dudes, which like don't, just don't do that, don't like pose as that thing, because you don't even understand what it is, um, but they are, and so they hate jazz camp, and the girl gets kicked out for kind of mouthing off, uh, and she decides to just hit the road, and she dad says like, you guys should come with me, um, we should just be a band because no one, no one we ever liked listening to, uh, got good at jazz camp. You know, they got good on the road, 
playing for like tough crowds. So that's where we want to be. That's where we want to go. And the guys are like, we will follow you anywhere because we have no wills of our own. You're highly charismatic and we're terrified of you. And we'll do whatever you tell us. Um, and also, we have huge crushes on you. Uh, so that's going to be a problem. Um, and it does become a problem. Uh, it's a bit like Itu Mama Tambien to the movie. There's a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, you know, the book about music, kids. Get on the road. My kid's teenagers, you know. Kids, kids is diminutizing. How dare you use that word? You should be ashamed of yourself. It's embarrassing. What is your favorite word? <sighs> Changes from day to day. Um, bramble. What about bramble? That's a nice. Yeah. It's mostly consonants. It's kind of, it comes out of the mouth. Bramble. And it's just a. I think it's got thorns, you don't want to fall on it. Um, no, sorry, right, let me do it again. Do a do over. No, I'll stay with Okay. Um, and if you could learn one language, what language would you Oh, man. And not just like better at English. <laughs> Um, it's a good question. I was just in uh, Japan. Uh, uh, Japanese would be really cool language. Yeah. And last question: What is what is your advice for aspiring writers? Oh, um, or filmmakers, or filmmakers, or like uh, making art, but telling stories, storytellers. Um, you know, just do it. Just uh, do a lot of it, and be prepared to not be good at it for a while. Because that's how it is. No one's like good at it right away. You know, even if you're good at aspects of it, and that's great, and you should like, take pride and comfort in that, there's always ways you can improve, and that's what you have to focus on. Um, so, you know, it's okay if you write a draft of something. It's not really, like, I think my first drafts are really terrible, and I really don't like them. Um, but they have to, that's the, you can't just skip straight to like a second draft. You know, the first draft is the first thing, and so it, you know, I mean, I wrote two books before me, and they never got published, and I never will, because they're not, they're not very good. Um, but I had to write them to to get to a place where I could write something, even like a little bit published. Uh, so, you know, it's just it's a long haul. I mean, just you know, and make sure that you're writing to write and not to have written which I think is the desire is, is at least at first, to, the, is the part where you show it to people, you know, and the part where you say, like, I'm a writer, you know, because I have this thing and I wrote it. And, like, that is, it's great, and it's great to be, to be satisfied, or to, to get satisfaction from that, but, but not to be satisfied, because ultimately, if you write, it has to be to write. Because if you don't love just to write, just the act of arranging words and you know playing with their possibilities, then sooner or later you're gonna hate it if you keep forcing yourself to do it. You know, if that's the if that is a part that you love, just like language, you know, the sound of it, the feel of it, you know, the, just this miracle that happens in someone else's head when they look at words on a page and it becomes like this entire world, you know. If that's what you love, then write. But if you just want to have written, then think. Just have a. Think about that. Okay. That was very pretentious. Thank you so much. Yeah, Xander, thank you, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Of course, of course. Great question.